Andrew to leave their boats and to follow him. He challenged that rich young ruler to give up his wealth and follow him. He challenged the, the woman at the well to leave her sinful life and to pursue things of purity and holiness. Yeah. But he was every step of the way, he was always trying to get somebody to, be, to step up their commitment level to God. Right. Jesus showed us the ultimate commitment when he went to the cross and died for our sins. He could have come off the cross at any time. He could have, he could have said, I'm not going to do this. I've changed my mind. And he could have come off at any time. But he was fully committed. He was committed to seeing his mission completed. He was committed to seeing it through to the very end. Right. And he was also committed to raising from the dead on the third day. Yes. So that we might have an opportunity. See... There's something unique about our commitment. Sometimes, how many of us have been so committed to this walk with God, but then we fail. And then all of a sudden it really takes us, it really messes us up. It makes us take steps backwards. And we and we start sliding back to what we used to be because we're we're embarrassed about our failures. We're, we're, we have shame that has come on us because we failed in, in I don't care what you want to call it, in one area, whatever it is, sin, sin. Yeah. Whatever it is that is a stumbling block to you. Well tonight I can tell you that there's a restoration for commitment. Even when you fall, even when you fail. See, there is a way back from failure. There's a man in the Bible by the name of Gehazi. He was the servant to Elisha. He had seen all of Elisha's miracles. He'd seen what God did in his life. He saw the pots of oil that kept pouring oil out until every empty vessel was filled. Yeah. He saw a barren woman who was able to give birth to a son and turn around to see that son die and see him raised from the dead. Yeah. He saw the, the prophets be poisoned and God intervene by the prayer of Elisha right. and they, no poisonous effect took effect on them. Yeah. He also saw when 20 loaves of bread and some ears of corn fed 2,200 men. And he also saw an axe head float that was made of iron. But yet, Gehazi made a critical error in his commitment. See, there was a man by the name of Naaman who was a Syrian general. And Elisha was, was he asked Elisha to give him instruction how to cure him of leprosy. And Elisha told him, did seven times. He did it, and, and by doing so, he was made clean, and the leprosy was, was healed. And then, at the same time, that, that Syrian general tried to give gifts and, and gold and things to, to, to Elisha. And Elisha said, no, I don't want any of that, because you, you can't buy what God has given you. Right. You can't buy what God does in your life. It is given freely, but it comes only from God and that God gets the glory for it. But see, Gehazi, he messed up. He saw all the gold and he saw the silver. He saw all the garments. And he was drawn by his own lust for those things. And he went and chased down the man after he left and said, Elisha changed his mind. You can give those gifts and uh, I'll take them. And he took them and hid them. And Elisha... When he found him, he said, did you not know I was with you even when you went back to them? I saw what you did. God knew what you did. And that leprosy that was on him is now going to be put on you and your sons. So all of a sudden, he lost everything. He lost his position. He was the right hand to Elisha. He, 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 was, he was blessed because he was part of what God was doing through Elisha's life. Yeah. And now... Gehazi's sin caused him to leave the presence of the prophet dying. He lost his favor, he lost his position, and he lost his power because he failed in his commitment. <clears throat> but it's kind of curious, if you read just a couple of chapters later, something interesting happens. You find a, a story about a Shunammite woman, this same woman that had, who was barren, that bore a son. And that son died and was raised from the dead. She's back again in chapter 8. And she's standing petitioning the king for the return of her property after being gone for seven years when the famine hit. And then you find in verse 4 of chapter 8 it says, And the king talked with Gehazi 
the servant of the man of God. So something happened between chapter 6 and chapter 8. Yeah. Chapter 6, he failed and lost it all. Yeah. In chapter 8, he's restored. Yeah. And he's serving Elisha once again. Yeah. So how is it that this man that lost out with Good. his commitment and lost out with what his will of God in his life was, how all of a sudden is he back and restored in his rightful place Good. in two short chapters? See, there was something that happened in chapter 7 that, that is unique. The army of Syria came against Israel and besieged the land, and they were trying to capture it. There was a great famine, and you can read in, and some of you may have read it, that, that they were selling donkey's heads, and they were selling dove dung, and they were selling all kinds of crazy things. Anything yeah. that they could eat, they, were, they, they would eat it because there was no food. And then, then something interesting happens. It says that there were four lepers that were sitting outside the gate. And they said to each other, Why sit we here until we die? Inside the city, we're going to die. But why don't we just go over to the Syrians? They might kill us, but then again, we, they might feel sorry for us and they might give us some food. So as they were heading across the field to go see them, all of a sudden something happened in the Syrian camp. And they started hearing right. great armies coming against right. them. Right. And they fled. They left everything. The tents, the food, the clothes, they were gone. They left out of there. The horses and the donkeys were still there. Everything was left. So the lepers come into the camp, going to beg for food or their life, whichever one it, yeah. it ended up being. Right. But the Bible says they went into one tent, and they ate, ate and drank to the heart content. And they carried away silver and gold and clothing, and they hid it. Sound familiar? Mm -hmm. in, that, in that previous chapter, Gehazi went and got all of those things, same things and hid it and lost everything. But then something happens to those men because they said in verse 9 of chapter 7, they said, then they said to one another, we do not do, we, are, we do not well. This day is a day of good tidings and we hold our peace. If we tarry till the morning light, some mischief will come upon us. Now therefore come that we may go and tell the king's household. Here's what I see. See those four lepers that were at the gate in chapter 7 were Gehazi and his sons. And when they went into the camp, they couldn't believe their fortune. They couldn't believe what they found. But when they saw the silver and the gold and the clothing, and they hid it, all of a sudden they remembered that that sin that was committed so many years previously. They repented, and when they repented, they didn't keep the blessings for themselves, but they went back to the city and told the king what had happened. And that's why we find Gehazi back in his commitment with, for God, back restored where he belonged, and he was standing and in, in working for Elisha. Amen. That was because, because of realizing their mistake, because of realizing what they had done, and repenting of that, and, and getting up from their failure, and going back to their commitment, they were restored. And by being restored, they were healed and they were restored to their position of authority Amen. with Elisha. But see, that's the good news story. Because that means that when we fall, when we fail, it's okay. We get back up and you keep pressing oh, forward. Amen. You're not, when you're running across the field, you're not going to make it all the way across a large field without tripping on something. Right, right. It's going to happen. I've ran across a lot of fields in my day. And I tell you what, I've got a lot of scars and bumps and bruises that, that I collected in the process. But the reality was, you still have to get back up. But you can't go back to where you came from. You can't go back to where you were. you got to burn those things behind you yeah. and let them go. And don't go back to them. And you got to press toward the mark. Meaning you've got to stay focused and you've got to stay true to what God has called you yes. to do. Yes. See, God has a purpose for each and every one of us. Yes. 